in the tradition there are two different types of artistic images of Pentecost that you very often find. Of course there are others, but they do tend to fall into to two styles, two types. One of them, more associated with the East, you can see behind me. Here on the wall, some of you spotted we've got a new picture here. So thanks to Anton for bringing this down to the chapel last night. And this is a very traditional icon from the Eastern Church of Pentecost. And even if you can't see it clearly now, behind the Easter candle, come and have a look afterwards and have a, have a good look. You notice, above all, I think, the harmony of the image. That the apostles, and in this case Our Lady, are seated in a semicircle, very tidily, very ordered. And actually, this is an image... It's not just a historical snapshot, it's an image of the whole church, because in the Eastern tradition you see St Paul sitting there, and four men holding books. These are the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Now of course St Paul wasn't in the upper room in the historical Pentecost, but this is showing us something about the harmony and the order that the Holy Spirit brings to the church through his love and his power. And you notice it's a semicircle, not a circle. It's open at the bottom, because the bottom half of the semicircle is you and me. The circle moves round, and then it, it comes into the church, into the person standing before the icon, into our congregation, so that we are part of that unity and that order. And at the very top, half hidden... You can just you see the bottom of a circle, those of you with good eyesight. This is the circle of God himself, the divinity, the most holy trinity in heaven and just touching the earth. Not very visible, but just coming into the earth, a sign of the incarnation, a sign of the descent of the Holy Spirit. So there's a great sense of unity and order. And the strange figure in the middle... The man crowned is not a person. It's a king who represents the cosmos, God's creation, against the backdrop of chaos. Do you see the darkness behind the king? Holding in his hands, you need really good eyesight to see this from the back row, 12 scrolls, rolled up scrolls, which are the teaching and the work of the apostles as they go into the cosmos. As yet, waiting for the apostles to go on their preaching and waiting for you and I to go and do our work of sharing the gospel. So the message of this whole icon, this whole iconography, is that the Holy Spirit brings order out of chaos and that this is part of God's work it reminds us of the Holy Spirit bringing order out of chaos at the beginning of Genesis in the seven days of creation it reminds us of the resurrection of Jesus himself and of the many gifts that are given to us all as St Paul said in the second reading but given to unite us in the one body of Jesus Christ, which is the Church. The diversity of gifts, how different we all are, humanly and spiritually, but that we are united in one body in the Church. And that order is one part of the life of the Church. Maybe it feels sometimes as if it's overemphasized, but it's very important. As Catholics, we live in a hierarchical church because you need some hierarchy and structure to integrate a community and help it to grow and continue over time. As Catholics, we have ritual in our liturgy. We're full of spontaneity as well, but we need some sense of order and tradition if we're going to pray together as a community and be united in our worship. The Holy Spirit bringing order out of chaos. But there's another artistic tradition of Pentecost 
more associated with the West. And I forgot to bring it down. I'm kicking myself. This morning upstairs in my bedroom, I've got an icon of Pentecost that was given to me on the day of my confirmation when I was 19, which was on the Feast of Pentecost today at my university chaplaincy. So I'm celebrating my own confirmation today. And in this little icon is actually a picture of a stained glass window in a Western church. Mary and Peter are in the middle, but there's no circle like in this Eastern icon. There are figures and faces of the apostles huddled together as if they're moving, looking in all different directions, some of them full of confusion, some fear, some excitement, some joy. There's a huge bird flapping around at the top. There are flames of fire like lightning coming from this bird, spreading randomly, it feels like, in all directions. Have you ever been in a room where a bird has got inside and is trapped? It's frightening, isn't it? You're frightened for yourself. You're frightened for the bird. And this image, this busier, more diverse, more chaotic image, reflects elements of the biblical story. The fire in the upper room, uncontrollable. The violent wind. It's what it says in the scriptures. The Holy Spirit didn't just come like a gentle breeze, but a violent wind. And the noise, and the, the imagery and the symbolism. And in this tradition, this artistic tradition, the message, if you like, is that the Holy Spirit brings chaos out of order, sometimes. That before the Spirit came, in the upper room, before Pentecost, the feeling that everything was very tidy and controlled. The Apostles and Mary, they were waiting patiently and calmly in tidy rows or clear circles. But now on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes, everything is turned upside down. The Spirit has broken the harmonious circle of the church and sent it scattered out of the upper room into the streets, speaking not the one language that they were speaking in the upper room, but the many chaotic languages of the people in the city. Chaos out of order. They seem to contradict, but you can imagine what I'm going to say, which is that both traditions are important. And we need to see which is most important for us and for me at this moment. Because at many levels, we do need more order. It's true in our society, in our own lives. We, all of us, me as much as you, we all have areas of moral chaos and we need a little bit of order and goodness and discipline in those areas. We have areas of spiritual chaos where we need a little bit more order and routine and habit to keep us on the path of the spiritual life. We sometimes have chaos in our relationships and we need just some solid faithfulness and friendship and honesty, ordinary, healthy, loving relationships. And in all these and many other areas, we want to pray to the Holy Spirit to bring some order into our lives, a sense of stability and purpose that we know that we need. But at another level, Sometimes we need some divine chaos because our lives can be too ordered and too secure. This is what Pope Francis meant when he said many years ago now, make a mess, which is printed for all, et all eternity on the UCL t-shirts, yes? <laughs> He's not asking us to destroy or undermine things that are valuable and important. But he's asking us to be more honest about those areas of life where things have got stagnant, trapped, 
boring, selfish, over-ordered, frigid. How many more words do I need to throw in to get the sense across? Because we can become too fixed and too in control, as if we know what we're doing and as if we know how to do it. And it's true in small and some areas, but it's not true in everything, especially in the spiritual life and especially in our mission and our vocation as Christians. It's not just our fault. It can be pressure from our parents and family. It can be from our peers, it can be from ourselves, it can even be from the habits and limitations of our church. But today at Pentecost, for all of us, it's a time to put everything, as it were, on the table, tidily, as the Apostles and Our Lady did in that period of waiting. And to say, come Holy Spirit. Do with me what you will. What do you want for my life? Where do you wish to take me? What gifts do you wish to give me? What gifts have you already given me but I haven't recognised or I haven't wanted to acknowledge? And how can I put them at the service of you and of others so that my life has some deeper meaning? The Apostles, remember, were afraid and hidden. They were not clever or powerful or even holy people. But the Spirit transformed them today and made them saints and missionaries. I sometimes wonder why there are not more saints in the church today. Given that, we've been given exactly the same gifts that the Holy Spirit that the Apostles were given by the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. They did not have a single advantage over us. Not one. We have faith and hope and charity. We have the same gift of the Holy Spirit and the same gifts of the Holy Spirit through our baptism and confirmation that the Apostles received on this day of Pentecost. Why are there not more saints amongst us? Why are we not saints? What's holding us back? It's not that God isn't giving us what we need. So today, let's have a genuine openness and freedom. For us as individuals, for me, for you, to say to God, come Holy Spirit. For us as a chaplaincy, this tiny group of people gathered here, what is God asking of us for our fellow students, for our colleges and universities? If this is our upper room and London is our Jerusalem, what is God asking of us? If the fire is burning here, if the wind is blowing, if the Holy Spirit is swooping wildly around, what is he saying of us? What is he asking of us today?